Art From Home, the Ruben Museum of Arts series of art workshops that you can do with your families either at home or outside. We're a museum of Himalayan art and ideas located in New York City and we're here to inspire you to get creative, get a little messy, and make something out of things that you have at home or even materials that you find outdoors. Family programs like this one are made possible through the generosity of Agnes Gund, New York Life Insurance Company, the Prospect Hill Foundation, Tiger Baron Foundation, Con Edison, and public funds from the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs in partnership with the City Council. General operating support of the Rubin Museum of Art is provided by the New York State Council on the Arts with the support of Governor Cuomo and the New York State Legislature, as well as by generous donations from the museum's board of trustees, individual donors, and members. Now, let's meet our teaching artist. Hey everyone, my name is Netanel and I'm a teaching artist at the Rubin Museum of Art in New York City. And I'm really excited to be a part of this month's Family Sunday. Today I'm in Israel and I am currently above the Sea of Galilee in a village where I am doing a documentary. And in this village I needed to find a way to live that was more economical but also what was not harming the earth. So I took two friends and we built a hut and we built it using only recycled materials either from the trash or found around the Sea of Galilee or from nature. So we use materials like clay, pine needles, dirt, mud, sand, anything you can think of um, we put in this house and even using rocks. Um, so, so that's where I am today. So I've been learning how to connect to nature again and really learning to, to become a part of you know the earth again. I feel like New York City sometimes we're, we're, we're in this beautiful city but we, we even forget that we can go out to a park. Um, so I would just want to remind people that, that you can always go outside, you can always find materials anywhere you go, uh, anywhere you are, and being here has totally taught me that. With that being said, let's get right into what this Family Sunday is all about. In celebration of Pride Month, June's Family Sunday will highlight the deity Avalokiteshvara as seen in the exhibition Masterworks, a journey through Himalayan art. Throughout the Himalayan region, the Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara has been represented as both male and female, and it is throughout this transcendence of dualities and the ability to take any form is in order to help others out of his or her infinite compassion manifests in in whatever form is best suited for the situation. Physically, Avalokiteshvara is often depicted with simplicity, graceful, androgynous proportions, and adorned with ornate crowns and opulent jewels. These jewels are taught to be a symbol of compassion and benevolence, and the promise of achieving worldly goals and material success and good health, as well as larger aspirations such as complete liberation and enlightenment. And with that being said, I'd like to ask you how you are going to bring compassion and, and empathy this month into your lives. I'm really excited to work on this project with you because for this month's Family Sunday, we're going to be creating our own jewelry and we are going to be doing that using recycled materials that we find in our homes and then we're going to be gifting these jewels that we're going to make to friends or family members. Pride Month is really special because it can be celebrated in so many ways. There are parades that take place all over the world, advertisements, journals, and amazing blog posts that share stories. And it's a great time um, for people to come out and show that they're proud of themselves. And then for people to also come out in support and solidarity. So if there's a parade happening near you, maybe you can find one this month and take the jewels we're gonna make 
For materials, we are going to use what we have in our homes. I really encourage you to dig around and see if there's anything uh, maybe in your own recycling bin that you could use for this project. But I also encourage you to go out into nature, maybe to a park or even on your walk to the grocery store and back. Maybe you'll find something on the ground that you can use for this project. And I also encourage you maybe to go dumpster dive um, in your building or outside, even to the recycling bin. You never know what you can find. Um, so the first object you will need is a paperweight. I have many rocks. I'm really fortunate to have a lot of rocks near me. So I've got a rock as a paperweight. You can really use anything. Um, even a book works great. And scissors, um, but if you don't have scissors, I don't think you really need them. And then I recommend getting um, plastic bags. So grocery bags or even, you know, just plastic bags you use for your trash. Um, and the more colorful, the better. And then I was really lucky. Um, I have a bunch of pine trees near me, so I got a bunch of pine needles. And I also have this palm that I found um, on the ground nearby. So that's what I'm gonna use. And you can also, um, if you have at home, some markers, you can use markers. These work great. Um, but again, if you wanna do this project in a way that is um, really, really, uh, conscious of the environment, you can go out and make your own mud. So maybe find some dirt nearby and add some water to it. Um, or even clay works great if you end up wanting to color your plastic bags. Um, any Anything you bring, um, any material you bring um, is, is gonna work great. Okay, so the first step is taking a plastic bag or any plastic that you have or material you want to use and making sheets out of it. So I'm gonna need a plastic bag or a bag and some scissors, um, but like I said, you can even tear it um, if you don't have scissors around. So I do right now, so I'm gonna show you with the scissors. So you want to cut the, the handles off first. That'll make it easier and save them because you might be able to use them for something a bit later. So I'm gonna put mine off to the side. And now I'm gonna cut this other handle off. I am going to now cut the sides of the bag. So you're gonna cut through the first side and then the second side. It's a bit windy where I am. So now that you've cut through both sides, you might need to rip a little bit more so they're perfectly cut. And then you're gonna cut down the center at the bottom of the bag where the sides meet. Great, so now you'll have two sheets of plastic left from your bag. And for today, we're gonna make a bracelet together, but you can get creative. You can create a necklace or a headpiece, a bracelet that wraps around a few times or dangles or even an anklet. So you can, um, the sky's the limit. <laughs> and there's, there's um, no limit to how many you can make and, and just have fun with it. So what I'm gonna do is put one of these uh, bags aside and I'm gonna stick with one. So we are going to first start off by making three strips of plastic that are two inches in width and the length I think go um, as long as the bag is because uh, we can always cut later but if you, if you use the short way it might end up being too small. So what I'm gonna start off by doing is just cutting the strips using my scissors. And 
and I recommend doing it slowly, but you can also go ahead and tear it. That works great too. So at this point, you should have three strips of plastic that you can lay side by side. And at this point, you can either color them in with marker or if you have different colored bags, you don't need to at all. Um, or you can go an alternative route and maybe make your own clay or mud mixture and try to paint them. Or even if you have paint at home, that would work great too. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and color them in, uh, maybe two of them, and then we will put them together. have the strips that you're happy with we are going to combine them now to make a bracelet so the first thing you want to do is take one of them and we're gonna twist them together so if you have tape at home this works great I don't have any tape um, so I'm just gonna tie them but that's what I did to make the bracelet I've been wearing throughout this whole video and it's been holding up pretty well so um, don't be worried if you don't have any tape at home um, what I recommend doing is kind of taking the top of your strip and folding it just ever so slightly inward and then twisting it okay so twisting it um, pretty tight and if you used markers I recommend twisting like in inward so that when you do this um, the marker doesn't kind of get all over the place. So now what you want to do is, now that you've kind of tied it and twisted it at the top, we're just going to twist it a little bit more and then we're going to just make a really simple knot. Kind of like that. And so we will repeat that with the other two strips. that you have all of the knots at the top of your strips, you're gonna wanna take a paperweight um, and you're gonna wanna group the three knots together and then put them under the paperweight. And so what we're gonna do now is twist um, and make a braid. So we're gonna twist each strip. And how we're gonna do that is just kind of taking it at the end and just starting to twist it with our fingers. And then when you get to the bottom, what you wanna do now is make a knot at the bottom or use tape if you have tape. 
And then you're gonna go and take your second strip, and again, you're going to twist and twist and twist. You can either do it before or after, is taking all of your strips and making a knot at the top so you bring them together. Just like that. So now they are all grouped together. So you can do that either before or after. And so then put it back under the paperweight and what you're gonna do now is make a braid. So we're gonna um, put one strap on top of the other and then again And this might take a few tries, but that's okay. Great, so when you get to the end, what you can do is make another knot. And try to keep this knot really towards the bottom so you have a lot of room to play with the bracelet. So now that you have your braid, you can um, have a friend or family member help you um, to measure your arm and see how big your bracelet needs to be. So I don't have anyone that can come and help me right now, but I think I can do it myself too. Um, you would just wanna tie it under and then pull a little bit and then kind of eyeball it and see where you think it is best and then take it off and then tie it around once and then you're going to have all these kind of flyaway um, pieces that are just hanging out maybe because it was too long or um, you didn't use scissors or maybe didn't use tape so then what you can do is grab a pair of scissors or even just rip them apart and really um, cut them away so you can have a really clean, nice bracelet. And make sure that if you're doing this outside that you collect all of your scraps so they don't kind of fly away. Um, but yeah, now I made a bracelet and also because it's plastic, it kind of stretches. So if you are making this at home alone, um, you can, you can always play around and, and, and maybe even re-tighten it if you don't like how it sits. But for now, I'm really happy with it. So if you have pine needles or other materials around that you want to use in your bracelets or necklaces, um, what you can do is take them and stuff them um, through or even use them while you're braiding um, as, as another strip. But I think it would, it's also fun to kind of just string them through your bracelet and play around. Thank you so much for being here with me and showing up and doing this project with your families. I wanna wish you a wonderful Pride Month and I hope you stay safe and healthy and have a wonderful summer and I'll hope to see you in the museum next time. Bye.